Hey guys, John Beck here with ADV Pools, and today we're riding KTM's 390 Adventure. With the 390 Adventure, KTM set out with the intent to design something smaller, lighter, and less imposing than a traditional adventure bike, and it allows people to get into the orange brand a little easier. The 390 Adventure is designed for both road and light off-road touring. The development of this bike was in conjunction with ex-Baja champ and Dakar veteran Quinn Cody. Now, Quinn took the Duke 390 platform and gave it a more off-road focus. Forks are stiffer, the, all the suspension actually is stiffer. It's also adjustable, so you're not stuck with the factory settings. And we've been riding this bike now for about two years. Got a pretty thorough test in it. We found some things we like, we found some things we wanted to change. We've made a few mods, so we're gonna dive into what we found. What you get with the KTM 390 Adventure is a 373cc, 43 horsepower single, 19, 17-inch cast wheel set, and it does have a shorter chassis than most bikes in the Adventure class. The WP Apex suspension has 6.7 inches travel up front with adjustable preload and damping. The shock has 6.9 inches of travel with adjustable preload and rebound. And the spring rates, both front and rear, are a little bit stiffer than most adventure bikes in this class. This bike also comes with an unusual amount of features for a bike at this price point. The five inch color TFT display has Bluetooth integration. This bike also has lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control and optional quick shifter. You also get a lot of premium components, including a slipper clutch and Bybri brakes, which are Brembo's made in India. Uh, as far as off-road components go, the 390 comes with a skid plate, crash bars, hand guards, and fat bars. Among the things that makes the 390 a capable touring bike are features such as a two-position windscreen, it has a 12-volt power port, it's got a 3.8-gallon tank, and a dedicated mount for GPSs. Now, one thing that was surprising to me is how much fun this bike was to ride on twisty roads, just as a, it's so small and unimposing that you can really kind of throw it around. It's, it's not a bike that's really going to bite you. Um, the lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control, the system's somewhat rudimentary and that traction control doesn't have various modes, it's simply on or off, but it is very effective. And when you're on those twisty or more aggressive roads, having the lean angle sensitive traction control and ABS is really confidence inspiring. Uh, even though traction control on this bike, as I mentioned before, doesn't have various modes, just being able to flip that on and know it's there, especially if you're running like knobby like this, it does make it a lot more fun. And I think what you're feeling really is that Duke DNA coming through. It's, this bike comes from a street platform. So when you're on the road throwing it around, it really does feel really fun, really flickable, really light. And it's surprising to get that much performance out of you know, a 373cc motor in a package at this price point. This bike at freeway speeds is more capable than I thought it would be. Uh, 90 mile an hour speeds are completely achievable. Obviously you're not gonna have the passing power you would like on a big twin or something like that. But even then it's, it has decent acceleration, decent power. I guess I would say a surprising amount considering it's a 390 single. Um, you do get a little bit, bit of vibration, uh, especially in the pegs, less so in the bars, but you kind of feel it everywhere. And it does change, the resonance of it changes at different speeds. At 70 miles an hour, it'll be real vibey, and all of a sudden you'll speed up and 80, it'll smooth out. The two position windscreen does offer good wind protection. We kept it in the high position. And with the stock saddle, you do get a little bit more wind protection just because you're kind of sitting down inside the bike more. Uh, adding the power parts saddle, gives you that additional cush, which makes it more comfortable to ride. You do lose a little bit of the wind protection just by virtue of your sitting up higher. Uh, there's some limitations to the bike, of course, being a single, especially when you're traveling fully loaded with luggage. Those times were pretty infrequent, however, though. Uh, the only one that really stands out is when we were doing a shoot on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. So we were at elevation, climbing a hill, fully loaded, and I found I was pretty tapped out trying to keep up with a couple big twin adventure bikes, but again, it's a single cylinder, fully loaded with luggage, at elevation, so these are some of the limitations that are just going to be there. In terms of comparing the motors in bikes of this class, adventure bikes in the um, single cylinder arena, so comparing it to something like the BMW 310, um, I would have to give an edge to the KTM, a pretty significant edge actually as far as power goes, um, both acceleration, top speed. Um, just how it performs in general, the motor is more sparky. And uh, as far as vibes go, it's actually a smoother bike as well for the most part, but overall it performs amazingly well for its size. And I would even compare it to something like the KLR, and you're roughly doubling the displacement once you get up into that realm. Yet, if you took these two bikes side by side, top speeds are really not that far off from one another. Uh, vibes really aren't that far off from one another. Um, with something like the KLR, if you're comparing that to the 390, 
What you're going to notice primarily is the fact that the KLR is massive by comparison as far as the seat goes, the, just everything. It's a bigger package. So that will give you the feeling that it's a, a smoother bike on the highway um, just by virtue of sheer weight. But sort of dismissing yourself from the chassis and just the size and the, the uh, presence of the machine, the motors themselves, the 390, again, it's right up there with the best of them as far as smoothness, acceleration, and power for an adventure bike in the single cylinder class. Uh, we also had the chance to take the 390s through some really rocky and really steep terrain. And this bike has both pros and cons when you get into that realm. Uh, again, the power is going to work against you a little bit if it's you know really steep, really challenging. The ground clearance is an issue for sure because you're hitting stuff a lot. Uh, smaller wheel set. All these things are definitely on the con side of things. The flip side is the bike is so much smaller and less intimidating than some of the heavyweight adventure bikes that it does give you the confidence to go into areas you might not normally want to go. Uh, some of the specific trails I'm thinking of, there's a couple I did where I've taken heavyweight adventure bikes through there, several different ones, and then I've taken dirt bikes through there, and then I've taken the 390 through these same trails. Aside from the clearance, the suspension actually worked really good. Uh, the heavyweight adventure bikes, you've got more power, you've got more clearance, you also have a lot more consequence if you throw the thing down. So the 390 was surprisingly confidence inspiring and especially on downhill. A couple of the tests we did got into some really extreme terrain. Uh, I'm used to doing these adventure ride tests on a whole wide variety of bikes. There was one trail in particular. It was a very steep, very rocky descent with exposure basically on both sides. It wasn't quite a ridge line. It was sort of a very narrow Jeep road, but I, it was it felt like straight down at times. Honestly, I felt more comfortable on the 390 than I would have on some of the big twin or heavyweight adventure bikes I've ridden before. And I, I think I mentioned it earlier, it goes back to the fact that this bike, it's easier to get a foot down and just the simple fact that it doesn't weigh as much. So when you're in those really, really steep, extreme terrains on descents and things sort of get sideways or get off kilter, it's easier to muscle the bike back where you need it to be. Now, while I didn't notice the suspension bottoming out very much, I did notice the skid plate bottoming out uh, fairly often, more than I'm used to, because this bike is lower and the witness marks on the skid plate will attest to that. But it is definitely something to be aware of, especially if you're coming, you know, like myself, where I come from riding big bikes through some relatively extreme terrain. This bike could totally get through it. You just have to be aware that you've got a lot less uh, ground clearance to work with, and that skid plate's gonna bite you if you start hammering stuff like you might hammer on a larger bike or a bike with more clearance. Now, admittedly, I went into this test expecting to be a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, I come from primarily riding heavyweight adventure bikes. That's kind of what I'm used to and what I like to do. I was pleasantly surprised in that the power delivery off-road is good, that the overall handling was very good. Um, the suspension was my primary concern because especially in the heavyweight bikes, you've got such a heavy machine. Bottoming out is always a thing. It's modding those bikes is a very common thing to do. This thing in stock form with luggage on a multi-day trip, I found I would bottom it out very seldomly, which really surprised me. And the bump compliance was also very good. We got into some uh, sort of washboard roads, a lot of stutter bumps, things like that. And then sometimes when you hit big G outs or you're kind of wheeling over a little thing, the bike started to become a lot more fun than I expected it to be. And I think part of that is it's just so small. It's so non-imposing. You know, you can sort of play around with the thing or whip it around without being worried about you know, about a 500 plus pound machine falling on you. Now the big thing among pretty much all adventure riders, always the main challenge or the main question is sand. Sand is kind of a litmus test for most adventure bikes. And honestly, the 390 for me, I wouldn't consider the best bike from a performance standpoint, the sand. And that I'm used to riding larger, longer, more powerful adventure bikes that tend to track through stuff and blow through stuff uh, in a different way. This bike being so small and so much shorter, it does tend to wander a little bit in sand. Um, the fact too that regardless of which tires you have in this bike, it's got a 1917 inch wheel set. All these factors come together to sort of hamper the performance once things start getting really, really sandy. Now the flip side of that is for a newer adventure rider, someone entering the realm or entering sand riding period, I'd 100% put them on this before I would put them on a big twin adventure bike or a heavyweight adventure bike. Simply because it's, it's uh, gonna be a lot less intimidating and a lot easier to try and figure out how to do it, even if it might not have that sort of like race level performance to it. Over nearly two years of testing, we got to try this bike both in stock form and with all the mods we did. The first thing, probably the most important, are the foot pegs. The 390 Adventure comes from the 390 Duke platform, which is a street bike. And street bikes typically have a more forward angled foot peg. For dirt, you need a flatter foot peg. So we opted to go with Blacktop's option, 
which both is wider, easier to stand on, grippier, and changes that angle to the correct angle you need for dirt. Next on the list for off-road or light off-road, you're going to be standing sometimes. And for my height, even at 5'11", the bars with coming from the street DNA were a little low. So the Power Parts catalog offers some spacers you can put under the stock bar risers, which raise the height about one inch and make for a better position standing and actually maintains a good, a good feel seated. And speaking of optional accessories for the 390, the stock skid plate is plastic and also has sort of a cutout, which can expose the engine. And for those riding off-road, that can be bad. So the Power Parts catalog has an aluminum option, which offers a good mix of both protection and clearance. One of the surprising aspects when the 390 came out was the fact that it came with cast wheels. Fortunately, KTM does offer optional spoked wheels for the 390, which both give it sort of a more off-road look as well as being more durable. The stock tires on the 390 are Continental TKC 70s, which are a 7030 street dirt tire. We opted to swap those out for the Tractionator RAL Z, which basically flips that ratio almost the other way. And by switching the tires, these still offer decent performance on the highway, but greatly improve the experience off-road. Among the other things we opted to change on the 390 uh, was the exhaust. We took the stock can off and we put the Akrapovich pipe. And while you're not going to wring a lot more power out of the motor necessarily, that change does drop a few pounds and it sounds better as well. Uh, we also swapped the stock two-part saddle out for the Ergo saddle from the Power Parts catalog, which both flattens it out as well as raises it up. You get more leg room and because there's no step, it allows you to slide back and forth. And for those planning adventure touring or carrying luggage on the 390, another key feature to add is the Power Parts catalog rear rack. It actually replaces the stock grab handles and positions a luggage rack further back. And the issue is with anything back here, any type of luggage or duffel or whatever, the short chassis means you're confined to the front. And when you get off road, when you get into the more technical or more sandy stuff where you have to get back over the bike, if you got something in your way, you just can't. So this luggage rack positions that luggage further back, opens up the cockpit, The second thing that did that were the bar risers because especially once you get the tall saddle, you're up higher, we had the correct foot pegs on there to change the angle right, so now you're standing in a proper dirt bike position. These one inch bar risers brought the bars up, so it kind of made everything feel like it all made sense together. Uh, we also took the stock mirrors and swapped those out for double takes, which are unbreakable. You can fold them in when you're in tight trails so they don't hit trees and things like that. Very pleasant surprise I had about the 390 is the range. Um, On one ride, we sort of backed ourselves into a corner with fuel to try and get to this one remote spot uh, on the uh, north rim of the Grand Canyon, and it worked out. The 390 has a 3.8 gallon tank. We filled it up and two days later still hadn't gotten gas. And I was, uh, reserve came on, the distance to empty kept chipping down, chipping down until finally it said zero miles range and the bike kept going. Basically, I pulled into a gas station with 232 miles on the tank. Um, there was about one-tenth of a gallon left, that was it. But still, it, the, I mean, that was off-road riding as well. And to be fair, the mileage that I got out of this bike um, was because we knew we were in a situation where fuel was going to be a concern. So I was short-shifting, I was trying to be as gentle as I could on the throttle most of the time. Uh, if you're not that, and if you're on the highway and you're just you know doing 80, 90 miles an hour all day, or off-road and riding very aggressively all day long, The fall off is fairly drastic. There's some curve there, I don't know what that would be, but basically you're going to get really, really good mileage until you don't. If I had to guess, that one ride where I got 232 miles out of the tank, that's at that one end of the extreme. If you were riding at the opposite end of that extreme, you know, pegged at the highway all day and really aggressive off-road, my guess is you'd probably be around the 160 mile range on a tank. Some of the quirks about the 390, um, I guess you could call them flaws, they're not insurmountable, they're not major things. But when you're riding this bike really, really hard off-road, some of these things surface. And one is the taillights. They're designed to be breakaway taillights, but they will tend to break themselves away if you're in just really, really hard terrain. And you can pop them back on. It's just really difficult to pop on sometimes. Uh, this front fairing, some of the plasticky bits we noticed, you know, through really, really aggressive riding, the mounting points can start to crack. Also, on this bike, the traction control is designed to reset itself if you stall or cycle the key or do anything like that. And the procedure does take kind of, it's not a major thing, but it's just like just that one second too long where you're like sitting there holding the button waiting going, why is this taking so long? And the 2022 model of the 390 has eliminated that problem by providing an off-road traction control mode. Now over these couple years of testing, I got to spend a lot of time on the 390 in a wide variety of conditions. And that's from urban commuting to long distance commuting to camping trips and all the things. Uh, as a bike, day in, day out, the 390, again, it goes back to it was a very surprising machine to me, um, primarily based on its performance and its comfort. It's just, it's an all day in the saddle bike, it's a quick run to the grocery store bike, it kind of can do all kinds of things. 
uh, long highway trips, especially with camping gear and all that, because the vibes are, again, in certain speeds, they're different, but they're within a very tolerable range. So for long highway trips, it's actually a really great bike. Um, I'm one of those riders that I really don't need barn door windscreens. I don't, I like the smoother airflow. Uh, I found the windscreen on this, especially with the tall saddle and my height worked perfectly. I would get a nice smooth airflow. Now in answering the question of who is the 390 Adventure designed for, uh, KTM clearly had newer riders in mind or wanting to sort of jump people into the adventure riding realm by creating a more or a less imposing bike at a lesser price point. Now that said, I think the application for the 390 goes beyond simply purely newer riders to people say, say very experienced riders, but experienced riders in a cruiser or a street environment that want to transition or try adventure riding. Really anybody that just wants to, that hasn't done adventure riding, that is curious about it. What the 390 does is allows you to get into it at a low price point, and then you can decide from there if you want to branch off and move to some other type of bike, a larger bike, say. That said, as capable as this bike is, it can also very well be an adventure bike for someone that enters the realm, decides they like adventure riding, and decides this does everything they need it to. Um, it can do a lot for its size. And that said, if you're an experienced rider that already has a big twin, say, would you go to the 390? Depends on the type of rider you are. For, in general, I would say probably no. But say for those riders that are getting older or those riders that are just tired of picking up bikes that weigh more than 500 pounds. Again, this might be a good option for people that, you know, I've been there, I've done the thing, I just want something that's a little easier, something a little mellower. Maybe I'm not riding as much as I used to and I don't need all the bells and whistles and to maintain a larger bike, that sort of thing. And in deciding or discussing who this bike is not for, um, that I think is almost a little easier to talk about than who it's for. For say the aggressive sport bike person that's just used to liter plus bikes in the twisties, 390 is definitely not that. Um, say you're someone that's very road oriented and wants all the creature comforts, you know, a larger heated seats, heated grips, uh, the, a bigger feature set in the TFT, all those sorts of things for, you know, burning trans state journeys. The 390 is probably not the best fit for that. And another group of people that would fall into this category are the aggressive off-road riders. And that could be either on dirt bikes or on adventure bikes. Now the KTM 390 Adventure shines in a lot of areas, but if I were to take all those different areas where it uh, works very well and roll them into one thing, I would say value is the primary component. Um, it's very small, it's very unimposing, it's very maneuverable. So for, as we've talked about before, for newer riders, it's a great bike to get into. Um, for those wanting to do longer trips, the KTM can definitely do those longer trips. Um, it also has enough power to get you into those challenging areas that as I said earlier, I think I wasn't expecting the bike to do as well as it did in some of these places. So the fact that it offers all of that, plus it's got dirt-oriented adjustable suspension, it's got the slipper clutch, the Vibri brakes, uh, color TFT display, um, lean angle sensitive traction control and ABS, it just it offers a lot of features for this price point. Now over the past couple years of testing, we put thousands of miles on the 390. And we did a lot of stuff in the Eastern Sierra in California, uh, we did portions of southern Nevada, we took it to the north rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona, and there was some fairly brutal terrain we encountered on this bike, and what surprised me is I've ridden many of these areas, in fact most of them, on a variety of bikes, typically big twin adventure bikes. So in the back of my mind I'm always thinking, what am I used to on these trips? And your, your expectations are based obviously on past experience and what you know about the machines. So I would go into these things with, you know, 100 plus horsepower bikes and travel and longer chassis and so when I look at this the visceral impression is this is going to be a thing this is going to be difficult so that's I think was the biggest takeaway for, for for me from this was going into these trips and after each one coming out more surprised by how comfortable I was on the 390 um, using it as a, literally like one of those you live off the bike type bikes you know where you're camping and carrying all your stuff that sort of thing I went into it with one impression based on past experience and came out with a different one. And so the 390 really changed my expectations about what you can get out of a smaller adventure bike. Now our test bike for this review was a 2020 model which sold for 6200. The 2022 models will retail for 6599 and they'll include things like the on-road and off-road traction control and while they still have cast wheels it's going to be a more robust set and those bikes are currently shipping to dealerships now. 
If you want more KTM 390 content, there's a full review on advpulse.com and we're going to put links to all the stories and rides and such we've done over the last two years of testing. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.